Submechanophobia refers to submerged human-made objects, and up until now, we've covered so many animatronics, but there are many more things to cover. So today, we'll be looking at 10 terrifying submerged statues. 10. We begin this video by talking about the works of Jason DeCares Taylor. Jason DeCares Taylor is a British sculptor and marine conservationist that created the world's first underwater sculpture park. Taylor has gained worldwide recognition as one of the first artists to integrate contemporary art with the conservation of marine life. He creates site-specific underwater sculptures which develop into artificial coral reefs. And not only that, but these underwater artificial coral reef installations divert tourists away from natural coral reefs that are already suffering and provides the opportunity for the natural reef's rehabilitation. His most ambitious projects to date are the creation of the world's largest underwater sculpture museum in Cancun and a 5-meter tall, 60-ton sculpture off the Bahamas, which we'll be talking about later on in this video. He has lots of art installations all around the world, which include underwater museums, submerged statues, tidal statues, and scientific collaborations like the Ocean Siren, a 4-meter high illuminated sculpture located in Australia that acts as a siren or warning signal that warm seas could be a risk to the Great Barrier Reef. Taylor's works of art are very impressive and even more interesting because of how they act as ways to protect and conserve the environment. But putting that aside, they are terrifying for people with submechanophobia and thalassophobia alike. 9. Just off the coast of the Melanara Beach on the island of Gran Canaria, people can see the god of the seas, Poseidon, coming out of the ocean. This statue is placed on a volcanic rock where, when the tide rises, it looks as if the statue is just coming out of the sea and looking out over his kingdom from his watchtower. The imposing bronze statue was placed on September 1, 2001. It has a height of 4.2 meters, stands in the middle of the ocean, occupying a privileged place on the beach. Poseidon is the work of the sculptor Luis Arancibia, who as a kid used to swim out to the volcanic rock in which the Poseidon statue is located now. The statue has had to be repaired on several occasions because of the area where it's placed. Once in 2017, for example, the tide was so rough that the waves broke against Poseidon and the statue's arm and trident disappeared under the water and were lost at the bottom of the sea, so they had to be replaced. This statue has become such an icon on this beach and is one of the most photographed elements. Seeing how Poseidon seems to emerge from the sea in full force while the waves are crashing into him is a very imposing sight. 8. The Awakening was created in 1980 by J. Seward Johnson Jr., an American artist known for painted bronze statues. The sculpture was originally installed at Haynes Point in East Potomac Park, Washington, D.C., until it was purchased for $750,000 in 2007 by real estate developer Milton Peterson so it could be installed at his new development in Maryland called National Harbor. The sculpture was removed from Haynes Point in February 2008, and then it was installed on a specially built beach along the Potomac River at National Harbor. The statue consists of five separate aluminum pieces buried in the ground, giving the impression of a distressed giant attempting to free himself from the ground. The left hand and right foot barely protrude, while the bent left leg and knee jut out into the air. The 17-foot-high right arm and hand reach farther out of the ground. The bearded face, with the mouth in mid-scream, struggles to emerge from the earth. The sculpture is not directly installed in water or submerged, but every once in a while, when the tide is high or the rain has been heavy, it can become semi-submerged, making it any submechanophobe's nightmares. It looks like the giant is drowning and trying to come up to the surface. 7. We talked about Jason DeCares Taylor's work and how it is helping save coral reefs. Well, in this case, 10 years ago, a group of faith-inspired divers called Sea Knights sank a statue of the Virgin Mary off the coast of Bohol in the Philippines. They did this in hopes that the statue would stop dynamite fishing in the area. Dynamite fishing shatters fragile coral colonies. Even the smallest piece of dynamite can blast a crater two to three feet in diameter. The blast kills coral tissues, and the surrounding rubble prevents adjacent coral colonies from recovery. The statue has had the expected effect and has succeeded in avoiding the coral to be dynamited because fishers have stopped using this practice for fear of destroying a religious image in the way. So much so that the statue is now covered in coral, which is pretty cool because it is helping the ecosystem thrive. But it looks scary. The coral in this area is gradually recovering, and it is reported that the number of dynamite fishers has decreased from hundreds to just a handful. As we have seen, many of these aquatic statues serve very important purposes and have logical explanations, 
but that doesn't make them less creepy. For many people, seeing a religious statue at the bottom of the sea makes it even creepier than a normal statue. And we can honestly agree. 6. At the bottom of Okanagan Lake in Canada resides an 8-foot-tall, 14-foot-long sea monster. This statue is a life-size homage to the legendary Ogopogo. Ogopogo was installed in the early 1990s by Doug Lundgren, office manager at Diving Dynamics. It lies 30 feet beneath the surface of the lake, where scuba divers can look down and see this green shadow, only to realize that it's the statue. To install it, a team of divers towed it across the lake, slowly sank it, and then anchored it to the bottom of the lake. Ogopogo's original name is Naha'aik, and this creature is described as a fierce lake monster that resided at Squally Point. The name wasn't changed to Ogopogo until a British dance hall song written in 1924 was composed. It is believed that the legendary Naha'aik has a snake-like body of about 25 meters long. But the sea creature is not the only treasure to be found in the depths of Okanagan Lake. The statue of Ogopogo is nestled near a sunken powerboat. Across the lake, at Wilson Landing, there is a submerged milk truck from the 1950s. There is also a Canadian Pacific Railway barge 300 feet deep at Bear Creek Provincial Park, several underwater parks for divers, and for the experience, they can follow the old ferry line across the lake and discover hidden treasures from years before. We can imagine that it is pretty terrifying to be diving at the lake and finding all of this stuff, but Ogopogo might be the scariest thing down there. Just looking at this image of the statue submerged in this green water gives us chills. 5. The Underwater Museum of Art, or MUSA for its Spanish acronym, is one of the largest and most ambitious underwater art attractions in the world. This is one of the most ambitious and known projects of British sculptor Jason DeCaris Taylor, who we talked about at the beginning of the video. This museum is located near the island of Isla Mujeres and the coast of Punta Nisuc in Cancun and it features over 500 permanent life-size sculptures. The museum is divided into two galleries. Salon Machones is 8 meters deep and suitable for both divers and snorkelers. Salon Nisuk is 4 meters deep and only permitted for snorkeling. Cancun Marine Park is one of the most visited stretches of water in the world. It receives over 750,000 visitors a year, which places immense pressure on its natural resources. Visitors to the marine park now divide their time between the museum and the natural reef, providing significant rest for natural overstressed areas. In total, the installations occupy an area of over 420 square meters of previously barren seabed. And now, the museum forms a structure that marine life can colonize. Celebrated works include The Silent Evolution, a 120-ton work of more than 400 individual statues, from which about 90 of them were inspired by real-life models, from the nearby fishing village of Puerto Morelos to create a community of people standing in defense of their oceans. Another is Reclamation, which is an angel with her back arched, her face and hands lifted towards the heavens, as if in divine reverence. The bankers are a symbol of how little we look to the future and how we are focused on short-term gain. Each sculpture is in a prayer position to show that monetary items have replaced as God. Anthropocene is a cast of a VW beetle with a mourning child on the windshield. The piece asks what we are leaving to future generations. This is an amazing exhibition, but we definitely won't be visiting it anytime soon. We would probably be scared out of our minds the whole time. 3. Ocean Atlas Now we get to Ocean Atlas, the other one of the most known projects that we mentioned from Jason DeCaris Taylor. Ocean Atlas is located at Nassau, Bahamas. At 18 feet tall, weighing 60 tons, it is the largest underwater statue in the world. The sculpture was commissioned by the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation, with the aim of creating an underwater sculpture garden in honor of its founder, Sir Nicholas Nuttall. The artwork depicts a local Bahamanian girl carrying the weight of the ocean above her in reference to the ancient Greek myth of Atlas, the titan who held up the heavens. Due to the sheer scale of the sculpture, it had to be assembled underwater in sections using an ambitious new technique developed and engineered by Taylor. At low tide, the work reflects a mirror image on the underside of the sea's surface. A solar light and flag is located on the highest point to aid marine navigation. As we said before, Ocean Atlas creates an artificial reef for marine life to colonize and inhabit, whilst drawing tourists away from overstressed natural reef areas. With our oceans and coral reefs currently facing collapse from numerous threats, including overfishing, habitat loss, ocean acidification, global warming, and water pollution, 
The peace symbolizes the burden we are currently asking future generations to carry, and the collective responsibility we must accept to prevent its collapse. Taylor's work is very impressive and important for the future of marine life, but that doesn't make it less terrifying. 2. Jason Voorhees Statue Warning, there are some Friday the 13th 6 spoilers ahead. The ending of the sixth installment of the Friday the 13th saga left Jason chained, apparently alive and at the bottom of Crystal Lake. And someone decided to take this very seriously and bring this moment to life. Back in 2013, a man named Doug Klein built and installed a statue of Jason Voorhees 112 feet below the surface of Lake Louise in Crosby, Minnesota. This lake is an old mining pit used for training purposes. And it not only holds Jason, but other divers have added their own flair over the years, with skeletons and mermaids. He used a bunch of stuff he had in his garage, like leftover plywood and 2x4s to create the statue. He also got the overalls from a secondhand store and the mask from eBay. In 2014, the first video showing Jason's statue was uploaded to YouTube, and it became an icon of the submechanophobia community. The statue has remained underwater since it was first created, so of course it is starting to show some wear and tear. But honestly, that just makes him look even more terrifying. It is great to see that Jason is still alive and well, terrifying divers at this Minnesota lake. Back in 2018, Klein said that he would be making a Freddy Krueger and an Eddie statue to keep Jason company. 1. Now we get to number 1, one of the most popular submechanophobia inducing pieces. You might have seen images or videos of this shark before, and it is honestly terrifying. This shark is currently abandoned in Lake of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. Dozens of videos have emerged showing the impressive sculpture worn out by the lake and sometimes full of small fish. This has caused a fascination around the whole world, and people want to know where this nightmare came from. Well, this chilling sculpture was made in 2007 for the short movie Chocolat. The shark appears swimming around inside the water during some scenes in the short. At the end of the production, the crew didn't know what to do with the shark, so they threw it into the water to scare divers that were swimming around the area. Since then, the shark has been visited by explorers. This sculpture is 41 meters long and 40 meters deep from shore to lake. But the most impressive thing about this lake is that this is not the only sculpture found, according to this map made by local divers. Here you can see that divers can find a bathtub, a gnome, a dolphin, a sailboat, and if you swim even deeper, you can find a terrifying dragon totally submerged. This lake is undoubtedly a terrifying place to dive in. Pretty scary stuff, isn't it? There's so much more to cover, so leave a comment below and tell us what you would like to see next.